title of my sermon. What kind of tree are you? It's an actual question that psychologists have used to help their clients improve processes and behaviors. So they ask them a question. If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? Would you be an oak tree? Do you picture yourself as something strong? In case you've never, ever used a handsaw and cut a piece of oak compared to a piece of pine, you'll find out just how strong oak is. It's one of the strongest woods. Is that the kind of tree you would be? Strong. Maybe slow growing. Perhaps that's you. Or how about a bristlecone pine? Has anybody seen a bristlecone pine? Hmm. Bristlecone pine. Many are 500 years or older. You can see the root system goes deep. They can be on a cliff. And the rains can beat a bristlecone pine. Wind, rain, storms, fires even. And they make it through it all. Matter of fact, in California, there is a tree called Methuselah. Old Methuselah. And it is a bristlecone pine. And you can go visit this tree. I talked to somebody last week that um, had been there and went and visited old Methuselah a few years ago. And so the scientists and everybody that deals in that type of science, they aged this tree at 4,765 years old meaning it made it through, if they were correct, the flood. That's a bristlecone pine there in California. Would you call yourself a bristlecone pine? You might be if you've gone through a lot of tests and trials, problems, issues, sickness, family relationships. You might think, well, I'm closer to a bristlecone pine. Nobody in here looks 500 years old, though, yet. Somebody raised their hand back there. I guess they are, but they raised it too fast. If it were 500, it'd be like this, I think. How about a maple tree? Would you be a maple tree? Where you give your resource to others. Anybody like maple syrup? I like real maple syrup. Not this stuff you can, that says imitation maple syrup. Or how about this real maple syrup flavor? Which means it's not maple syrup, it's just got a flavor that way. I like maple syrup. But I have to tell you today that you're not any of those trees. No, you're not. You are a fruit tree. You are a fruit tree. We know what they are down here in South Florida. I knew even more. We had some fruit trees in Tennessee, but not as many as they have down here. You were put here on earth to bear fruit. That's why you're a fruit tree. Go to John 15 and verse 8. If you will, go with me. John 15. 15 and verse 8. That last night Christ was alive. 15 and verse 8. He said, By this my Father is glorified that you bear what? Not that you just bear fruit. It says that you bear much fruit.
Anybody not know what this is down here? I can honestly tell you, I didn't know until I moved here. I did not know. No. We didn't grow anything like that. And I never, when I was traveling to the Caribbean, I thought, I'm not eating that. <laughs> now I eat it quite often. And I like it. But he didn't, this is not saying, okay, I got one fruit. Okay. I have done my job. Uh-uh. Much fruit. Much. Much. Are we going to do it? Do we do it? Will we do it when we leave here? So we have been called to bear fruit. Much fruit. I want to look at a story that perhaps you have read it. There's only three or four verses in it, but to me, it's an incredible story for us today on this Feast of First Fruits, this Feast of Weeks. If you will, go with me to Matthew 21. Matthew 21 takes place the last week of Jesus Christ's life. And I'll tell just a little story before that Christ had come into town that day, the last week of his life, and people started all excited. And he rode in on a donkey. And they started coming out and praising him. And they got upset. Shut these people up. They're going crazy. He said, no, I can't. Because if I quieten them, the stones are going to cry out. How much do you think that ticked the leaders of the day off? And then he went from there, got off the, got off the donkey, and went to the temple, just like he did when he first started his ministry just before the first Passover of his ministry, and he had to clean out the temple again. There were a bunch of crooks. Yes, he did it twice. Once at the start, and here at the end. And then he leaves, and he goes to Bethany, walks to Bethany, about two miles away, spends the night in Bethany, and then he comes back, and let's jump in that story. Matthew 21, verse 18. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, Jerusalem, he was hungry. Anybody get hungry this morning? Yes? Do you have any fruit? Yeah? I had grape nuts and bananas. Mangoes? Oh, okay. I can see these are not going to go to a waste here, are they? He returned to the city, he was hungry, and seeing a fig tree by the road. Anybody like figs besides Fig Newton? Yeah, I think everybody does. I love figs. He saw a fig tree sitting by the road. And he came to it and found on it was nothing but leaves. And said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. And immediately, the fig tree withered away. Died. Done. Leaves, no fruit. Leaves, no fruit. My neighbor, because our, our mango tree is not the two we have, not big enough to produce, but my neighbor has six. Six mango trees. Got mangoes everywhere. Six different kinds of mangoes. I was happy with just mango. I didn't know there were six. Seven, seven different kinds. But he just said, hey, I can't eat all these mangoes. Get all you want. So last year, we've got a freezer full of frozen mangoes that we're using. Various things. But here, what's interesting is this year, we had a very dry winter, spring. Last year, the ground was covered with these mangoes. This year, we had six trees. He had six trees. 
Only one produced. Only one. Five other trees. Boy, they looked it. Man, they were green leaves. It just looked like, oh, wow, we're going to have we're gonna have all kinds of money. Uh-uh. Just one. Go to those trees and there's nothing there. Now, they look like they're going to produce. You ever think about that as Christ was teaching this? Hmm. Could we be, as a fruit tree, have a lot of green leaves but no fruit? Hmm. This is a story about the Feast of First Fruits. And so, let's go on down. Verse 20. And when his disciples saw it, they marveled. Because, obviously, it happened just there. He walked up to the tree. He said, you don't have anything on it? Died. That quickly. They saw it. Got rid of it. It's done. How did the fake tree, they say, wither away so soon? Well... Who created them? Same one that can destroy them. Who created you? Same one that can destroy you. So Jesus said, uh, answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, uh, but also if you say to the mountains, Be re removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And all things, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. So that was their lesson for them. But that was, is not just the lesson for us. The lesson is a fig tree. What happened to the fig tree? See, this fig tree, this was the last week of his life. He had already ridden into town such glory. Hosanna, they called out. And, and, and he cast out the, the, the money changers and, and all the crooks in the temple. And he was heading towards Passover. And he looked. And this fig tree was symbolic. It was a symbol of Jerusalem. The holy city looked beautiful. The temple, this beautiful thing that Herod had built. Everybody could see it for miles around. And people came in there to worship. Remember, it was the week of Passover in the days of unleavened bread. And people were coming in and giving their, their animals and 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 bringing in all their stuff to celebrate this feast. And it looked, Jerusalem looked like a holy city. But was it? Just a few days from that time, that city is going to call and cry out, Barabbas, Barabbas, crucify this Galilean. Hmm. He saw it for what it was. It was a green tree with plenty of leaves, but no fruit. Is this also to us? Is it symbolic of our tree? Do we have green leaves, but no fruit? Think about it. What do people see? If that mango tree, you go out to my mango tree or to your mango tree, and there's fruit hanging, you can see it. The fruit is obvious. What about ours? Feast of first fruits. Interesting. Are we like Jerusalem? Looks pretty. For you guys, you ever dated a beautiful looking girl until she opened her mouth? <laughs> or you've been a, one of these young ladies, you meet a guy and he's a good looking guy, but he's dumb as dirt. 
Well, God has to look at us because we're not called for our looks. We're not even called for our brains. But we're called for this. Our heart. Because he wants us in his kingdom. And he knows we're going to have to have a, a big one of these to get there. Fig tree with no figs. Mango tree with no mangoes. Sounds kind of useless, doesn't it? I told this story a few years ago. True story. About an Indian chief after they had been settled and one of the presidents of the United States came and was addressing this big gathering. And so they asked this, this Indian chief to go there and see what he thought. And so this president made this elaborate speech, as we're probably going to have to hear these guys running for president in the next few months. And they went on and on and told about the future and told all this stuff. And so after the speech was done, they came to this old Indian chief, because he was known for his wisdom. And they said, well, what do you think of the America's chief and he just said minds me big clouds no rain <laughs> big clouds no rain just like green leaves no fruit what about us because that takes it to us but it this shows us if we put ourselves as this fruit tree, as this fig tree, it makes us think the end is before us as a fruitless tree. He shows he doesn't want a fruitless tree. Matter of fact, he gets rid of a fruitless tree because what good is a fruitless tree to anyone? Go with me to Luke. Luke. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. <laughs> Verse 47. Christ is giving a parable here about someone he leaves in charge. And this goes away and then he comes back and leaves them to take care of his estate. But they don't do it. They don't think he's coming back. So they get to drinking red stripe and carrying on and eating and partying and just go, hey, you know, he's not coming back, but he comes back. And it's severe. Verse 47, he said, And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes as there was slavery at the time and they could beat you. Let's go down to 48. But he who did not know yet committed things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with a few. It's like the guy knew. The guy knew what he was supposed to do and he didn't do it. And then there's other people, they didn't know what they were supposed to do. They didn't do it. What's he saying? Where much is given, much is required you know you're supposed to bear fruit and you don't bear fruit you're going to answer to him and you have no excuse like other people I didn't know no you didn't but others you did you did know we do know we know that we're supposed to produce where much is given, much is required. Wow. That's meritocracy, isn't it? God's kingdom is going to be about meritocracy. God's judging us now on our merits. He's telling us that, no, not everybody gets the prize. 
Not everybody's going to, oh, we want everybody to feel good, even if they didn't really try. But it's a participation. God's not into that. Huh? He said, not going to work. Now we're in his kingdom. He wants us to do our best. Give our best. He's asking us, like this day, to bear fruit. Hmm. Think about it. What more, what greater thing could God give us than what he's given us? His son to die for us. So I don't, all I have to do is repent every day. Strive to do better, but I don't have to be beaten. I don't have to be killed. Because my elder brother did it for me. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good gift. But not enough. God said that's not enough. I'm going to give you my actual essence. I'm going to give you a part of me. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. Actual power on loan from God. Because it's not yours. Not your power. It's His. He gave it, as I said yesterday, 1,993 years ago in Mass. Now, we know He gave it. He's saying, what are you doing about it? Are you going to use it? Or will you just be a fig tree? With no fruit at all. Just leaves. And haven't we known people who claim to be a Christian and boy, they look good. They can look all pious. Oh, yes, yes. Oh. Oh. And you get to know them and they're not. Nothing wrong raising hands to God. Solomon did it when he dedicated the temple. A prayer is something you want to do. But what did he say? Don't do it. Don't make those long prayers like the hypocrites and, and so everybody could see you. Stand on the street corners. Fruitless trees. Fruitless trees. So let's look at what time I have left. Let's look at your fig tree. Can we? Are you willing to look at your fig tree today? I hope you are, because whether you look at it, at it or not, God is. And you know what else? Other people. That's the reason you bear fruit, is for people to see it and to glorify you and go, oh, oh yes. No, it's not about you. It's about him. All these things that he wants us to do. So, let's look at the metaphor of you and a fig tree. Picture yourself as a fig tree. Would people come and get figs from you? Or when they go, I'm not going to waste my time going that far. There's no figs on that tree. Hmm. Metaphorically, the Holy Spirit, is it the green leaves? Because God gives it. God gives you the Holy Spirit. And your tree can look green. But is it bearing fruit? Because God, He's only going to do so much. The Holy Spirit can help you bear fruit, but if you don't want to bear fruit, guess what? That tree is just going to be green until Christ is done with it because it didn't bear fruit. Remember what happened to the fig tree? Hmm. Or much is given, much is required. Are we prepared for that? So let's look. Let's look at your fruit. Your tree. 
You're a fruit tree. And there's one place in the scripture. Now, there's many places that describe it. But there's one in specific, and you all know it. Galatians 5.22, right? Said so these are the fruits of the Spirit. Okay. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, gentleness, long-suffering, faithfulness, self-control. How many fruits is that? Nine. Nine fruits. You ever thought about that? That you bear much fruit. Um, no. One. No, I'm just going to bear one. Just one fruit. All I need. I like mangoes. I'm just going to bear mango. Um, goodness. I like goodness. I'm just going to. I'm just going to bear goodness. That's not what the scripture says, does it? The fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness. There's not a fruit tree out there that bears different kinds of fruit. I can't go to a mango tree and get pear, apple, and mangoes. No. But God is asking us to bear different fruit. And He wants to see that fruit from the same tree. That's impossible. Except with God. With God, all things are possible, I believe the Scripture says, doesn't it? He's not satisfied with one. He wants to see us produce all the fruit. Now I must say, some fruits are easier to produce, fruits of the Spirit, than others. And it, it varies individually. One size doesn't fit all. Some people have joy in their life. Some are really like faithfulness. But God is asking us to become a productive fig tree, fruit tree that bears all kinds of fruits. Let's, let's look at that. The first one. It's, it's the reason it's first. Love. I gave a sermon on that a couple weeks ago. Agape, agapeo. Anybody remember that? Or is it? Okay. Do you have it? Do you have agape? Outgoing concern. God expects us to have it. He wants us to have it. It's so important. Faith, hope, and love. Of these three, the greatest is what? Love. It's in the love chapter. 1 Corinthians 13. He wants us to have it. Okay, you say, well, I've got that one. Do you have any others? Is that something? Matter of fact, in, uh, just after 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, uh, the 14th chapter, the first verse says, pursue love. Pursue love. We got to pursue it. How are you going to have it if you don't pursue it? How do you develop it? How does it grow on your tree? Joy. I'm just going to cover three. We have love. We can all agree on that, that we need more love. Outgoing concern. That's just, that's just not eros. That's not uh, filio, filio storge. But it's agape. Agapeo. It's an action. It's a verb. Something you go do. Are you showing love? No, that guy's got his turn signal on. That ain't going to happen with me. Not today. I'm not letting him in. 
But that's a small thing, is it? Is it? If you're producing such fruit as love, will you be there to hold the door for someone? Oh, these are small things. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because we may handle the big things. When it comes to it, we're, we're going to show love. But what about the small things that people really see? And you know, in today's world, you start showing love even in the small things, people are going to look, why? Because they don't see it. Because, because the, the, the fruit's not there. And anytime anybody does something, yeah, why did, he, why did you hold the door? It's because of what's in here. That fruit can be seen. Christ even said, you got to love your enemies. How about that fruit showing? You know, see if that person just, just talked to you or treated you that way and you just smiled? Obvious fruit. Obvious fruit. And people say, well, I wouldn't do that. Well, no. But you haven't been called to. We've been called to bear fruit. We're the first fruits. We're supposed to bear. What if we don't bear? Is anybody going to see any fruit today? Mm. Let's go to the next one. Because love everybody can agree on, but obviously the next fruit, the Spirit, people don't agree on. Joy. Do you know how I know? Because I don't see anybody with a lot of joy. Hi, how are you? Oh, okay. <laughs> how was your day? Oh, it may get better. It's not been good so far. Beautiful weather today. And, oh, too humid. You laugh because you hear it. You know it. You've seen people that way. Are we that way? Or can there be joy? We have a song, Joy, There's Joy in My Heart. Right? Do we? Is it? Because that's where it needs to be. Happy and joy, or happy is said to be a short state of time. Joy is a longer, more constant. Happy can be up here. Happy, happy, joy. I'm happy because I'm happy. But joy is something, it's a state of mind. Do we have that state? Not just being happy between long periods of time. It's a fruit. So wait a minute, God is saying that we have to be this, we're this fruit tree and we have to bear all these fruits? Isn't that a lot to do? He doesn't think so. He thinks you can have love. And everybody here is going to love the potluck today. Okay? And they're going to eat it. And enjoy. And we should because it's a feast day. And this is a feast of first fruits when they brought in all their food. Because now harvesting had begun. They weren't, they weren't starving. They weren't just like checking to see how much food they could get till the harvest came. And we're gonna be able to make it. But now they had it. So you can imagine Pentecost in Jerusalem. Boy, they were bringing food in. There was an abundance of it. And God planned it that way. But he's also planned today for us to be able to have food. He's blessed us with that food. All good things come from above. James said that. But are we? Are we showing those fruits? Do we want to work on those fruits? Do we kind of look at it at the end of the day and go, hmm, there may be a couple I need to work on. That's why I'm only covering three. The first three. The other six you can look at. Last one's, last one to me shouldn't be the last one. Because to me it's one of the hardest. It is for me, may not be for you, 
Self-control? Hmm. Why didn't he leave that? Why didn't he just quit at eight? I would have been, that would have been so much easier for me if he'd have just said, here's the eight. But he put self-control as the very last one. And that's, I must say, probably one of the hardest for me. Now everybody's going to be looking at my plate when I come through the food and say, self-control, hmm? Hmm. So, let's, let's move on. I have 10 minutes, so I'd better. Mango. What do you think of? What do you think of when you see mangoes? I mean, you see them. What? Eat, of course. What else about mangoes? Sweet? Juicy? But are they good for you? They are? Don, are they good? Yes. They're actually good. Uh, any of those nine fruits that we're supposed to be, is any of them bad for you? Okay, which of those nine fruits do you want your mate or your kids not to have? Mm. Mm. You, want to, you want her to have all of them. Of course, you want your dad to have all of them too, don't you? She's just rolling her eyes like, not going to get me to go there. You're wise in your young age. But... There's so much to enjoy about mangoes. I'm glad it's a fruit. God is glad that all nine are fruits because it shows His character. Jesus Christ exemplified every one of these nine every day in such an abundance that people, that little children, climbed up on his lap that women would walk out of the way to talk to him. The sick, the elderly, all came to him because of these nine fruits. By love, he healed these people. He didn't have to. He wasn't required. He could have healed, you know, he said he would heal the brokenhearted. Okay, he could have done that. Healed one person, said, okay, I'm done. Now you guys leave me alone for my three and a half years. I'm just going to go somewhere and eat mangoes and, fruit and figs. <laughs> Are we content producing just one or two fruits? I'd say we are. Many of us are. But God isn't. That's what we have to examine about ourselves. On this day of fruits so that we do we do produce much fruit let's go to the next one we had love and we have joy and then we have what peace peace are you a peaceful person do you make peace It's important in a marriage. It's important in a family. Otherwise, there's just conflict all the time. Peace. Oh, we see it all the time. It's said all the time, but is it manifested in us? Our high school, they had to make a, a law a rule that they didn't have until I got to be a junior or senior because people started being instigators. They wanted to see people fight. Wanted to see, you know, they, they caused friction. I had a class. How much of time have I got? Okay. Oops, somebody tell me. That's Mary's telling me to quit. I knew I couldn't get away from her. I don't know if we're I don't know if we're webcasting now, but she's like, all right. Speed it up. Speed it up. Come on. Are we webcasting? 
Oh, then that's, uh, yeah, that was her then. Probably saying, what, what time is it? But in my school, we had a class. It was a shop class. And I had an older teacher, and I thought he was so old, but he's my age now. I'm like, that's not old, but then he was old. <laughs> and back when I was in school, uh, every teacher had a paddle. Oh, well, that's probably none today, but yeah, he had a paddle. And you, discipline was a paddle. Mm -hmm. And he whipped quite often. Mm -hmm. And there was this one guy that was sitting back there. He wasn't paying attention. He had the book he was supposed to be reading. He put it up, and he had another book reading beside him. Anybody ever do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the teacher knew it. And so he just said, hey, put that book down. And the guy just kind of didn't pay any attention to it. Then he tells him, I told you to put that book down, put it away. And he just kind of puts it down and smirks. And teacher goes, I'll pull you in there and give you three licks. And the guy kind of smirked a little bit. But the guy, two seats over, he said, I bet you won't. <laughs> he thinks you're, you won't whip him. And then somebody else said, yeah, he, they're thinking you won't whip him. And he said, I will whip him. I bet you won't. I, yes, I will. This went back, I couldn't believe the teacher was doing this. What did he do? He got so upset, he grabbed the student and went in and whipped him. The guy came out, he looked at the two guys, he goes, thanks a lot. <laughs> what, did, what does God say to us about that? He's, Jesus stood on the Sermon on the Mount and said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called what? Sons of God. Children of God. Can we, are we peacemakers? Do we try to find peace? wherever we can, instead of instigators. I hope so. I hope we can be that. So do you bring peace? Is peace one of the fruits of your spirit? Is it one of the fruits you produce? You know what God said? Prove it. Prove it. Prove it this week. Prove it next month. Prove it to all those people you run into that want to start something. People love to start arguments today, don't they? Whether it's about politics, whether it's about races, whether it's about whatever, they love to do it. Can we get drug into it or will, we, or will our fruit override? So do we show joy? He's happy. He doesn't have a worry in the world. You have no bills to pay. No car to fill up. He has joy. He loves it because everybody's paying attention. Patty's paying more attention than she does to her husband. <laughs> Alex, maybe because he's got hair. I don't know. <laughs> But oh, are we missing joy? Are we missing peace? Bring, bring joy into people's lives. Bring joy into your life by producing that fruit, by having being peaceful, by showing love. This is what it's all about because you are a fruit tree. And God says, go and bear much fruit. Put it on display because first fruit First thought is putting God first. Think about that. First fruits, first thought is putting God first. And you will, you will produce fruit because it's His Spirit that will guide you. A fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness. It's one of those nine. Are we faithful to God? Because He is always faithful to us.
So, brethren, as we celebrate this feast, the first fruits, this feast of Pentecost, this 50th, this 1,993rd feast of Pentecost in the church of God, I ask one question. What kind of tree are you? I'm going to stand here till you tell me. What kind of tree are you? That's right. Let's feast.